fans, 98,000 Barca fans already with their little cards to put up a big mosaic that you just see appear as if by magic on your screen. And to the now very famous Barcelona him. Both teams strolling out onto the pitch, led by the referee for today, Mr. Undiano Mayenko. So again, they always do produce very, very impressive mosaics here, don't they? It is, it is absolutely fabulous. I must say, Paul, though, the thing that I most liked about them the instructions. Were, the, were the brilliant instructions in the paper today. The instructions, it really was, I mean, it's mosaics for dummies. The instructions said, one, stand up, two, pick up your card, three, hold it in the air. <laughs> brilliant, thank you. It's so simple, and yet the effect is very spectacular. Right opposite us, you have the big Barcelona shield. Barca behind one of the goals. Catalan flag where we are. All of a sudden, this ground has come alive, and there, uh, two sides. They're all good friends. Little kiss for it from Samuel Eto from Raul. It's good to see Eto back. Be interesting to see how fit he really is. He didn't look that great against Liverpool. No, he didn't. It, it is interesting, isn't it, that all the Real Madrid old boys are all, all being very nice to Eto, and it does help to kind of provoke that feeling that hang on, things aren't good for Eto at Barcelona. There's a very strong feeling that he's going to go out in the year. Could it even be back to Real Madrid? I think that would make him that even less be... popular than Luis Figo. That would be huge, wouldn't it? That would be absolutely huge. So here we are, the two sides. Real Madrid, a couple of surprises in their lineup. Barca. Well, when we get to the lineup, I think they might even be playing just three men in defence tonight. If they do, they it's are, very, but... very brave from from Frank Rijkaard. Of course, we're talking about possible crisis. All sorts of declarations coming out of the Barcelona dressing room as well. Yeah, there are. Let's have a quick look at the lineups, though. Okay, so for Real Madrid, Ike Casillas in goal, Salgado, Ramos, Diara, Raúl, captain, Guti, Gago getting another chance, Van Nistelrooy leading the attack, Iguain. We think he'll play on the right. Ivan Elguera and Miguel Torres. Bad news for Roberto Carlos. He was diagnosed with a torn calf muscle yesterday. He's going to be out of action for a month. And he's one of those players you wonder, will he play for Real Madrid again? Because Roberto Carlos has announced that he will leave Real Madrid at the end of the season. Here's the Barca team. Okay, in goal, Valdez, Marquez, Puyol, Xavi, Eto, Ronaldinho, Messi, Deco, Thuram, Oliguer and Andres Iniesta. So the three little guys in midfield. The question is, will Marquez play as a central defender with Puyol on the left? Or will he play as a deep-seating, deep-lying midfielder? I think almost certainly he'll play as a deep line midfielder who will then drop into the defence when he needs to. But Barca have basically got no fullbacks. They're going to play three at the back. Oliguer more or less is a fullback, but Puyol on the left really isn't. And I'll tell you what, Paul, if Barca have been brave, Madrid, I think, have been cowardly. I think the absence of Robinho tonight is a dreadful mistake from Capello. Just confirming the referee, though, Diana Mayenka. The thing is, Oliguer is not quick, is he? Now we, no. saw, we saw Robinho. Robinho, I think, one-on-one -on -one with Oliguer would get real joy out of Oliguer tonight for Real Madrid. Real Madrid have very, very little pace in their side. In fact, I don't think they have one genuinely fast player in the team. They've got a couple that, who are not slow. That, Higuain that, is that not lad slow. There, Gonzalo Higuain. They'll be looking for Gago on the left there to supply the passes along with Guti. But he's not actually quick. And if Madrid are going to play on the break, which I think given the stars of these two sides, they probably are, to play on the break, you need pace. But do you think then Barca are going to try and snuff them out in central midfield, get right at tight on Gago and Diada, deny them the space to move the ball and then look to, to launch what they've been calling it here. They've got R.E.M. in attack. Ronaldinho, Eto'o and, and Messi. Messi. So could it be the end of the world as we know it for Real Madrid tonight? There, there are so many... REM song related puns that we could come up with. Aren't there? It's, it's the moment ridiculous. of reckoning, which is my favourite REM album, I have to think. So, Samuel Eto with a bit behind between his teeth, he's only back after a while. Oh, those long, long six months through injury, or four months, in fact, it was meant to be six. He's forced himself back quickly. But there's been a full start, hasn't there, in terms of his return? Mm. Because he actually came back now five weeks ago. Yeah. Um, played five minutes, disappeared, following game refused to play, then disappeared for two more games. Started against Athletic Bilbao two weeks ago, was excellent. Superb, yeah. Cheers, Samuel. But then um, Athletic Bilbao really aren't much cop at the moment. Struggling, my boys. OK, here's Oleguer getting an early touch, and it does look it indeed freezing. as if it's three at the back. Puyol playing sort of a left-sided central defender. So Madrid, they'll be looking for Higuain to get into that space. And what will Madrid will we see tonight? Will we see the Madrid from the first 45 minutes against the Cafe when they looked slow and sluggish? Or will we see them from the second half where they were up for it, they worked hard, 
They're pressured and they could have done, did enough to win the game. Well, at the very least, they will be up for it. There is no game that, that's going to motivate them the way this one does. But whether they have the, the, the physical capacity and the technical capacity to do so, I'm not so sure. This is a very, um, it's a very difficult game to call tonight because Barcelona are fundamentally a better side than Real Madrid and they are at home. Therefore, of course, they are favourites. But I think this is one of those games where virtually anything can happen. And I think from, from, a, from a huge victory for Barcelona to a victory for Real Madrid, I don't think Madrid can hammer Barcelona. That's true. But I really do think this is a game where anything can happen. Both teams having good records on at home. Barca at home, great record. Played 12, won 10, drawn 2. Real Madrid away from home, they've played 13, won 8, drawn 1, only four defeats. So, both sides, you say, are playing to the strengths. Barca at home and Real Madrid away. Yeah. There's Guti getting an early touch. And Mr. Roy knocks it back to Gago, looking to send the ball. That's what they've been looking for. They're looking for those corners. Yeah, yeah but they have, spaces. they have a problem, Real Madrid, if they're going to look for the corners and, and look for that little bit of space where Barcelona don't have a fullback. And that is that Real Madrid don't have a player there either because tactically they're playing with no one wide of midfield, either on the right or the left. And the two players who are nearest to being wide midfielders, i.e. Guti left, Raul right, neither of them have the pace to go into that, that space. It's a very strange... I don't think, for example, I don't think uh, Capello expected this lineup from Barcelona. That much is true. But I still think he's... I think he's been over-conservative tonight. Well, Capello conservative. Lovely touch. Puyol forced into the challenge. And there, Barca looking to open it up. Ronaldinho, who's got a few questions about his fitness over the week. He... Ooh, offside against Eto'o, we're dead in line with that. I think he probably was by centimetres. I, I must confess, I thought Sergio Ramos was level with him. I'm not convinced he was offside. Tight decision, the flag went up very quickly. So Ronaldinho didn't train with the squad on Friday, trained a little bit on Thursday, trained a little bit with them on Friday. We've been told that in the afternoon, though, about 6 o'clock yesterday, Ronaldinho went back to the training ground on his own, spent an hour practising free kicks. And this year, free kicks have been probably the best thing he's done because he scored uh, 16 goals, only two of them from open play. He's got uh, well, 17, 17. Sorry, 17 goals, only two of them with his feet from open play all season. He's scored, I think, five free kicks, five penalties. Um, and... And it, you get the feeling that despite 17 is a really good return of goals for a guy who's essentially not a creative in open player. Yeah. But you just, you know, when you analyse him, you just think he really hasn't had the season. Well, here he, he is, done. looking to take on Salgado, Ronaldinho, cuts inside, and leashes a shot, hit the other. Would have been a bad moment for him to score, really, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> After you've just said he's not done much in open play. Well, I think from Marquez. Actually, incidentally, Paul, I think he's aware of that, and I think that's one of the reasons why he should, in theory at least, be very, very, very motivated tonight. The thing you should bear in mind is that Ronaldinho had a very poor game in the Bernabeu early this season. Real Madrid won that game 2 0. Might be a factor later on in the season, of course, because if teams do draw on points, then it goes head to head on individual goal difference. So, if, for example, this was a draw and Madrid and Barca ended the season level, then Madrid on points, then Madrid would have the edge. Yeah, so in that sense, Barcelona, you know, they need, they need a victory, but they need a 2-0 victory if at all possible. Although I think they will feel that any victory will more or less knock Madrid out of it. Yeah, exactly. I don't think that's the, the major problem for them. As Iniesta, once again, Eto looking a bit sharp. Got there ahead of Elguera, snapping at his heels, he pulls it back to Ronaldinho. Looking to fire the ball across the penalty area. It's cleared, Duram, poor header there from the Frenchman, and this is where... Barca's three-man defence does look a little bit open because there's Van Nistelrooy receiving. There's Raul on the run through. Pressure from Barcelona forcing Madrid back, but there's still space out wide. It's Gonzalo Higuain. No Ram slips. Good chance. He is 1-0 to Real Madrid. And it is Van Nistelrooy. Rude Van Nistelrooy taking advantage of big gaps in the Barcelona defence. has put Real Madrid ahead. And I tell you, it wasn't just Rude Van Nistelrooy on that attack. Raul was so, so open at the far post. Barcelona have just allowed themselves to get completely torn apart with an attack that's not particularly clever, not particularly incisive, just very sensible, um, neat passing. And Rudvan Nistelrooy, I'm not 100% sure about the finish because it struck me that the ball went in quite centrally. Once again, Turam not particularly great. Does it get deflection off Puyol? Well, that's what I'm wondering because you see... Baldes we'll, see we'll see from this angle, won't we? 
Nope. Well, I think Valdez is a little bit... I don't know if he's a bit unsighted, but it doesn't really matter. It's 1-0 to Real Madrid. Five minutes down. Ruud van Nistelrooy, unlucky for some, his 13th goal of the season. And you've got to say, Barca tactics really helped them there. Yep. I mean, it, it, it seemed like a strange decision from the very start. Um, I mean, Barca will keep playing, of course they will, but lovely pass. Here's Messi, can he level it quickly? Leo Messi. Well, it, it's stating the obvious, but I'm going to say it anyway. Real Madrid couldn't have wished for a better start, and by that I mean more than just having scored the goal. I mean the way they scored the goal, um, and, and having scored it so early. Because if, if Real Madrid were unsure about their tactics, well, and their tactics are essentially defensive, they are now in a position where, right, we can defend this. Um, not only that, but they've seen the Barcelona back line, they've seen they can get through them, and they'll be thinking to themselves, we defend, we plan the break, we can take this lot. Well, exactly, it's played right into Real Madrid's hands, and just as it did in the Bernabeu, Madrid getting that all-important early goal. Yeah, and I think Barcelona are a side that look very, very weak when they go a goal down. Very weak. There's Guti, once again, space out wide. This time it's Miguel Torres. Well, it was Torres who provided the cross for the goal as well. I mean, the only, the only width is, is really coming from, from that little deep, bit deeper, isn't it? We should actually talk about players who are out of this game. Real Madrid was out four injured players, Cannavaro, Roberto Carlos, Beckham and Reyes. Beckham, remember last week he collided against an advertising hoarding. He's damaged knee ligaments, he'll be out for a month. And Reyes, after that collision with Abondan Thierry, is also out for three or four weeks. Barca without Ludovic, Julie and Sambrota, both suspended. They were both sent off in the two bosses. 2-1 two defeat to Sevilla last Saturday. Both a bit harsh, they can't set you at the cards. Like. I thought so, yeah. I was surprised that... Um but uh, when they asked for, for an appeal on the, on the Julie one, I was surprised that wasn't overturned. Salgado in hard referee gives a throw in. And tell you what, if this is a battle of two teams, and we've got slightly fragile morale at the moment, what's that just happened to Barcelona is not going to make well, it exactly. much easier. So much of it is about confidence, and I think Barca won down. They will, feel, they will feel really, really up against it now. And Madrid, who I think... You know, I think if oh, Barcelona had scored the first goal, Madrid could have found themselves in real trouble. Lovely turn from Van Nistelrooy. And the free gives the free kick. Dangerous free kick for Real Madrid. Of course, the question is, no Reyes, no Roberto Carlos, no Beckham. Who's going to take this? <laughs> um, Ramos, maybe? Ramos is hitting for Sevilla. Yeah, Ramos looks like he's going into the area for the header, though. I think they might not shoot. So it's Guti maybe to chip it in. Oliger, maybe a little bit lucky to escape out of booking there, took Van Nistelrooy out, got stitched up like a kipper by the Dutch striker. Well, I, I, I think, I mean, this is why I'm, I was so surprised that Real Madrid didn't play with Robinho, because I think while Oliger is fairly steady, in a, in, in a back three rather than a back four where he's got a lot of space around him, I think he's vulnerable, very vulnerable. Only three men in the wall, Guti went for it, was he? he was always up for, up for the possibility at the near post, definitely worth an effort. Diara spreads it out to Sergio Ramos. Distinctive white headband, which we're grateful for him wearing today. Loses it. And Samuel Eto. Ramos surging along the touchline. Great pace from Eto, but the ball's already gone out for a throw in. And the camp now is a little bit nervy, Sid. The camp now is very, very nervy. I must confess, actually, even, even before they, they conceded that goal, um, Barcelona, I felt like the camp now didn't have that atmosphere that you expect. A little. A little flat. A couple a of little... years ago, it was absolutely bouncing, wasn't it? Yeah, it, 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 it's strange, isn't it? There's a there's a kind of there's a kind of resignation in the air almost, which is bizarre because Barca are still probably favourites for the league, even though they're not top. And yeah, you know, the thing we should also bear in mind is when we played their European game, but poor ball there from Gago on Thursday. Barca played on Tuesday. Great run from Eto. No offside. Samuel Eto. Garcia saves with his feet. And. And nobody in the middle. Ronaldinho really. You've got to gamble when Eto is going through. Ronaldinho just stood and watched that. You've got to be in there because if he charged into the penalty area, he would have maybe had an open goal. Once again, Madrid going down the other end, finding a bit of space that looked like handball from Raul. The linesman's raised his flag. Free kick goes Barca's way. Not least because the angle that Eto is running through on. When you're on the left-hand side, you've got to be coming into the area because the angle is running for on. The opportunity 
to shoot is there, but also the opportunity to pull it back is there. And given the angle it, that he's at, it's very likely that the ball will end up in the middle of the area. I'm really surprised when Antonio didn't make the effort. Andres Iniesta, Echo, looking for the return pass. Deco back to Echo, opens it up to Leo Messi. Messi can he level it. What a ladies and gentlemen, we have a game of football here in the camp now. Leo. Messi is number 19 on his back. He's only 19 years old, and it is now one all. I thought you were going to say his 19th goal of the season or something. I thought there was a third 19 coming. The, the, the shirt says, Fuerza Tio, in other words, be strong uncle, but Tio also means mate. So I don't know if it's actually directed at his uncle that or directed at some friend of his that's perhaps going for a tough time. Quite possibly, Tiago Motta. That could be, be directed at Tiago Motta. Question of offside, perhaps, on that. He looks up. Lovely finish. Great finish. He never hits the ball hard, does he, Messi? Great pass as well from Eto. And a lovely finish. That is teamwork. And that is one all. Game on again. <laughs> Eto, Eto running up behind him like a man possessed. It's a it's nice interchange of passes. Really, really good finish. Ica Casillas wearing the Ica Casillas face. Ica Casillas face. Yeah. Um, and we have got a game now because I think if the game had gone on very much longer without Barca scoring, I think they would have got nervous. I think it's now they may think, right, we're back in this. But Madrid, I tell you, Madrid on the break, and here we go again. You've got to say, Rijkaard's playing in the Real Madrid's hands. Here's Guti straight down into the area. Guti goes down, penalty. No way. Oh, I tell you what, I th it's red as well. No, it's not. Oh, yellow card for Oleger. What, what a game we've got. This is absolutely surreal. Right, all again. I must confess, we'll have, we'll have to wait for the replay. Perhaps it's a little hasty of me to say no way, but my first impression was that there wasn't contact there. Frank Rijkaard, what must he have been thinking? We're talking about, yeah, it's a penalty, I think. Look at this, he just catches him yes. on his left foot. I mean, Gutti, Gutti certainly makes the most of well, it, but, but it's it is. Contact, clear contact. And he leaves his left foot out there, but it's clear contact. So, Ruud van Nistelrooy, he scored against Bayern from the penalty spot. He scored against Getafe from the penalty spot. He's taking this. The ball's not even on the penalty spot. It's actually behind it this time. The last one he took was just in front of it. This one's behind. So, can he put Madrid back in the lead? He has done 2-1. Goodness gracious. Who would have expected that? Well, Paul, before the game, we were saying that this is a match where anything can happen. Well, I was anything, expecting any, this. Anything is happening. And now it's Victor what Valdez's turn. What earth is going on? Valdez is turned to put on the face. Now, what on earth is going on here? This is incredible. But once again, in the run-up to the penalty, Barca's defence was sold short. There was only Horribly three of them short. there. Good penalty. Completely fools Valdez. All of a sudden, Rude probably isn't on the spot, is it, that ball? Knows, has discovered how to score penalties again. Well, he scored his 12th and 13th goals of the season. So 13th and 14th, losing track. Well, I mean, I'm losing track of the game already. It's only 13 minutes old. So it's the scoreboard. They've forgotten to put the second the good goal. Do they have? Haven't they? Maybe they're hoping if they if they keep the mouth shut, no one will Well, we're talking about momentum. How much of a blow is that to Barca's it's morale a, now? It's, it's ridiculous because Barca have just put themselves back in the game. I was just saying. They can sort this out now. They can go back to scratch. They can play, um, having got themselves in the game, having created a very nice goal, and play properly. But then immediately, what we played, they committed suicide. Again. Well, I'm, you know, and, and, and again, you know, I have to confess that, that I thought Real Madrid probably didn't have the pace to perhaps to take advantage of Barca's openness. But but the reality is, Barca have been so ridiculously open that they haven't needed pace to take advantage of it. The thing is, as well, they're playing three at the back, but it's not as if Leo Messi, who's sort of playing on the right of, an, of the attacking three, is getting back to give any cover to Oliguer. No, of course not, but then Messi, Messi probably hasn't been asked to. Messi is playing as a forward, not as a left-sided midfielder. Oof, bad mistake from Turam. Looking very nervous. Higuain collects the ball, he looks up. Finds Turam with his attempted cross, but that's not a bad ball into the area. And Van Nistelrooy making himself very difficult. I think the referee gave a foul in I the end, he did. but... Which, incidentally, I think is probably a little harsh. I think Van Roy and Oliver are both battling for position to some extent. So a quick look at cross from Dura. Yeah, he's just going to a little bit of climbing. A little bit of a tie on Oliver. But... 
And, you know, what must, what must Leo Messi be thinking? He scores a great goal, and he must just be looking back at his defenders and thinking, what on earth are they playing? It's not just the defenders, though, is it? Because they're a man short in defence. You know, it's the fact that he's playing 4-3-4-3. Uh, three, three, and, and, and I tell you, Rijkaard is under pressure. Now, if you're under pressure and you lose because you're unlucky or whatever, then, then fine. But if you're under pressure and you lose playing a very strange tactical formation, you're just going to get destroyed. Yeah, exactly. You're opening, you're opening yourself up to criticism. Another ball looking for Messi. That's just a little bit too quick. And Ike Casillas gets it probably on his second touch of the game, actually. Well, that's the other thing, isn't it? I mean, admittedly, this is not surprising as we're only, uh, what are we, 16 minutes in. But we've only had... 15, one shot for Barca, one goal. Two shots from Madrid, two goals. They're carrying like this way. It might end up 25-24 or something. Although the day that Real Madrid take 24 shots is uh, well, it's um, is 100% effectiveness. It's incredible, isn't it? And maybe Madrid. has been very, very lively. The main thing, the thing that surprised me about him, isn't necessarily that he's playing well because he's a very talented footballer, but he's looked quick. Well, he just falls down there off the. Yeah, sure happened, he though. was in front of Marquez when Marquez took the free kick, and I think Marquez may have caught him as he followed through, but then, of course, that's Guti's fault for being in the way of it. Once again, space for Guti to receive the ball. Torres looks, at the, looks for the overlap. It's robbed by Messi. Working back this time, the little Argentinian. Here's Ronaldinho! Chopped from behind by Sergio Ramos. A little bit of tension down there on the pitch. The referee just wants to slow things down for a moment, and you see his calm down gesture there, 33 year old Undiano Mayenko from Navarra. He's actually not got a terrific ref record refereeing Barcelona, actually, 14 games he's refereed them, five Barca wins, eight draws, and one defeat. Which isn't great considering it's Barca. From Barca's perspective, yeah, it's not good at all. They're only going better on Van Nistelrooy, but Madrid. They're really motivated, aren't they? They are motivated, but, but the, the weird thing is that they haven't had to be particularly aggressive so far. They've just had to pick out easy passes through the gap, and Barcelona look horribly, horribly open. I was going to tell you Indiano's record with Real Madrid, which is 13 games, 8 wins, 3 draws and 2 defeats. Messi once again causing trouble. He's been Battling a pick of the Ronaldinho so far. gets in the way. Zeto! Samuel Eto! Ica Casillas wins the duel! Well, he's had two duels, hasn't he, with Eto, and he's won them both. Which means, of course, I was lying when they said they'd had one shot and one goal because they've now had three shots. Good cross from Eto. Ronaldinho wide! Well, there's Paul. Not Ronaldinho. just wide, but another word that sounds like wide. Why? Ronaldinho's up. That's going in the back of the net, and Marcus jumps with him. I'm uh, sure that ball is going in the back of the net until Marquez jumps with Ronaldinho. Get in each other's way is the great ball from Ronaldinho. No offside, Eto just took that little extra touch and Ica Good save, eh? does really, really well. First one, OK, you can say that Eto didn't have a great angle. But yeah. Ronaldinho would have scored until Marquez got I'm sure of that. Ramos just did enough to put them off. How close were we there to two all? Ronaldinho takes the touch. Eto, it's caught by Diara. Mali International. And Barca taking that too quickly and wasting it. And play on, says Undiano Mayenka quite correctly. Once again, you look up, it's three against three. This time, Barca in hard, but Van Nistelrooy working. Can only clear the ball back to Valdez. Sense. With Marquez is opening up to Iniesta, a little bit of space for Iniesta, he's carried it past Salgado. I don't know if Salgado pulled a must seem to pull he, up there. I think he has. He looks very, very uncomfortable. Let's pull his boots come off, actually. As it is, Barca continuing well, with I the think attack. Sal Salgado's been really foolish there. He should have picked up his boot and got into position rather than putting his boot on as the as well, I think Barca it, I think attacked around him. inside to pick up his boot, actually. Actually, he's waving. I think he wants to change, and you know? I think he's injured himself. And another free kick for Barcelona. So it's again taken quickly. I think they need to keep, the, to keep the ball moving, which is why they're taking it quickly, but they need to be... Oh, the, oh, oh, Ramos, that is disgraceful. That, that is that an is, absolutely awful oof. challenge. That is at least a yellow card. That is just hack, hack, hack. That is a really, really bad challenge from Ramos. I think you could make a case for that being a red card. 
Yeah, because more than a foul, it's it's, it's an assault, it's isn't it? It's an assault, yeah. I think Ika Sainte calmed down Sergio. I actually think Ramos is Ramos is a player who, who's um, he's committed more fouls than any other player in, in, in the Real Madrid side this year. Um, but, but honestly, that is absolutely six well, is it? That is awful. It's really very, very bad. Yeah, I think he went into the game with 59 fouls committed. More than anybody, except maybe Emerson. Emerson's, Emerson's also on 50, 55, Emerson's on, Ramos on 59. Um, and, and, and Ramos has had a lot of cards this year, but in some ways he's lucky he's not had more because he's done quite a lot of that this season. Messi taking the free kick, and it's a very, very poor free kick. Good battling there. Oh, Indiana, I'm not sure about that one. I'm not at all sure about that one. We've not seen very much of Deco, and given that Barcelona have a free man, a free little man midfield, they've gone for Xavi Iniesta and which Deco. Deco is the guy you expect to be the aggressive on, which he is there. Um, but we've not really seen him get involved yet. Well, neither Iniesta hasn't got into it enough yet either. And they're the people Barca need to get playing if they're to unlock the Real Madrid defence. They've already seen, already seen the odd signs of the Barca tendency of to try and batter their way through the heart of the defence, which isn't going to do them a lot of favours. Ike taking a good free kick. Who's his arm there, Van Nistelrooy? On Oliguer and Puyol. Anywhere will do. Salgado gets a good head on that. And here is Deco. Got Messi in a lot of space on this side, near side of the pitch, but he's gone back to Puyol. Iniesta. He's got Diara ahead of him, Andres Iniesta. Who did working hard to close down those Barca midfielders. Eto on the left, picks up Ronaldinho, linesman's flag has gone up for offside. 22 minutes gone, Barcelona 1, Real Madrid 2. Ruud van Nistelrooy with both Madrid goals and Leo Messi. Temporarily levelling matters for Barca. It's taken a while with his um, free kick seeker, isn't he? He is, and I, I think... Um the fact that the fans are having a go at him already is more than anything else to alert the referee that, hang on, you know, you're going to have to warn him at some stage that he can't keep doing this. There's Raul against Iniesta. Done well there, Raul Gonzalez. Not such a great cross from the Arab, not a brilliant clearance from Puyol, but it's dropped kindly for Barca. Ronaldinho making space, it's sure he's going to look for the run from Messi. Said he's gone the other way to Eto. Just allowed Madrid chance to regroup, though. And once again, trying to go through the middle. Iniesta. They look so vulnerable. And look, when the ball breaks, look how vulnerable four, they are. Once again, four against four. Oliguer gets in well this time, and he was lucky. Space for the break as well for Barca this time. Eto wanted it. Xavi didn't, didn't, didn't seem to look for it, or if he did, he thought he couldn't make the pass. Once again, the danger man, Leo Messi. Head into the area, great block from Ramos. Marquez in quickly. Once again, Madrid looking to break. Diara being held by Xavi. Free kick for Real Madrid, and I think. Good decision by Indiana and an intelligent free kick to commit at the same time. Just stopping Madrid. Because once again, the yeah, Barca, it's, a, it's a foul from Marquez, isn't it? Barca playing those little diagonal passes ahead at, across the face of the Real Madrid defence in midfield. And when they get intercepted, it's just well, route one, isn't it, the, towards the Barca goal? Yeah, and, and of course, the thing about Barcelona is, is all year there's been question marks about who their defensive midfielder is. Now, they haven't really got a defensive midfielder precisely at the time when they've got a defender less. So they, they're kind of, if you like, making themselves doubly vulnerable. Um, I think they've looked horribly, horribly open at the back of Barcelona tonight. And I think there's, there's more goals in this for both sides. Certainly Barca have had their chances. Atto seen himself denied twice by Ike Casillas. was our Ronaldinho header. Or Ronaldinho stroke Marquez header. Go wide. What Barcelona need to be very aware of as well is I think they're giving away too many silly free kicks. I think they can win the ball off Madrid. Without, without putting their players on the floor. And, and Madrid's players, given that they're in the lead, they're not going to need a second invitation to go down and, and take the sting out of the game, take the pace out of the game, and try and waste a little bit of time, even though we're very early. So Barca need to be 
be wary not to commit stupid fouls and unnecessary well, what fouls. What they're doing is they're but having look to at, look at commit. pressure them. Oh, goodness. Valdez, we know he's not the greatest with his feet, but he was put under all sorts of pressure there. Um, Free kick this time, just taking the pressure off, but this is the looking, a look of a nervous team at the moment. To be honest as well, you know, I, I, think, I don't think Madrid looked that great at the back. If there's someone in Spain happy watching this performance in Seville, Sevilla will be looking at this and thinking, blimey, these two aren't up to much. Great challenge from Ramos. Got to be a little bit careful though, he has picked up a booking. One of two Real Madrid players booked along with Guti. Barca meanwhile have got Oliguer. Oh. With a yellow card to his name. Good advantage this time. Eto, sorry Ronaldinho, cutting inside, looking for Eto, he turns. He shoots, it's saved by Ike Casillas. Didn't get good contact on it there, Eto. Well, Ike's put the ball out, assuming someone's injured, but I have no idea who's injured. He just got a little bit of space there. Didn't catch it at all. Well, did he? What's happened there? I'm not sure. Well, Barca are going to be effectively forced to give the ball back, but why did Casillas boot that out? Someone must have been injured, but there's absolutely no sign of I who it is. I don't know if it was Marcus at the start of that previous Barca move. But Ica's been clever there, because there was nobody down on the ground when he kicked it out, so therefore another 30 seconds of game goes. Tick, yeah. tick, tick. Oh. Third plays it out to Ronaldinho, just some signs of Barca coming to life. Ronaldinho, Ica! Messi, 2-0! Goodness gracious, Leo! Leo gives his regards to the Dio again. Two all in the camp now. What on earth are we watching? This is an amazing game. It's not called in Classico for nothing. Just when you thought Bass had wasted another chance because he could see us had pulled off his third great save of the night. There is Leo Messi. 27 minutes gone in the camp now. Barcelona 2, Real Madrid 2. Lovely work from Ronaldinho. Eto. Actually, Ronaldinho, it's a very good save, isn't it? I thought Messi was going to put that over. Mm. I must admit, when that ball dropped to him, I thought, hello, he's putting it over. And you know what, Paul? Look what Leo Messi does. Look what he does. Oh, well, we just cut it on the replay. He does something I've never, ever seen him do. What? He thrashes the ball. He really puts his foot through it and he says, Avid. <laughs> that is exactly his words, is it? Avid. Avid. In Spanish. I imagine he probably said Toma. Well, but... Messi, knowing how quiet Messi is, Toma. Toma. <laughs> and Capella, you saw know. his frustration. Now, now Barcelona need to, need to make sure they don't allow... <laughs> they probably want to sort of stay on level terms for more than 30 seconds this time, won't they? And not commit silly fouls like that yeah. one that Marcus just committed, which I think is worthy of a booking. And I think... The referee agrees with Diana Mayenko thinks so. So Marquez joins Oleguer in the referee's book. This has been a bizarre game so far, hasn't it? Oh, we're heading for like a 6 all or something, aren't we, if it carries on at this rate? But w if you were Rijkaard now, would you take the moment to think, hang on a second, let's get this defence organised? I mean, surely you must have seen that his team are like a colander. I, I, and it, I, think, I think, Paul, I think that from the touchline, Rijkaard can't change his defence at the moment, unless he says to Marcus, look, you go and play as an orthodox centre-back. But if Puyol's he does that, Puyol's a left-back and it doesn't work. What, what he needs to do, and John Laporta appears to be quite enjoying this, what he needs to do is, is I think, wait till half-time and then maybe talk about it. But I think Rijkaard is probably quite committed to this formation. He should be committed. Um, that's the way he's playing. He should committed, be committed, yeah, for going for this formation. But it's, it's absolutely bizarre. What's interesting, though, in this game so far, this might sound hard on Real Madrid, their two girls have come because of Barca. OK, they've played well, they've moved the ball well and they've used the spaces intelligently. But they've come because Barca have given them spaces. Yep. Barca's two girls have come because they've broken down yes. the Madrid defence. Yeah, and, and what, we've, what we're seeing is, is the embodiment, if you like, of the, of the two side styles, in that Barcelona are a side who play football, play football, try and create chances. Madrid are a side who sit, wait and break to create chances. And I think what's happened is we've seen, as I say, we've seen two goals that sum up the two sides, and I say that knowing that one of them is a penalty, because frankly, in recent weeks, goals from penalties well, have summed up Real Madrid as well. Madrid has got four goals in the last what, three weeks. Three of them have been penalties. Yeah. In fact, yeah. if you count the, yeah, especially counting the Bayern one. 
But hey, and at last, they're all worth the save on the score sheet. Of course though. they are. Um, and, and Barca's fans are finding their voice, and there's a little bit of atmosphere now. And, and I sort of hope, from the point of view of the spectacle, that Barcelona don't settle and, and, and try and play intelligently now. I hope they keep just kind of going for it, because we're going to have a hell of a game if they do. Well, half an hour gone in the camp now, and they don't call it El Clasico for nothing. It certainly lived up to expectation this year. 30 minutes gone. FC Barcelona 2, both scored by Leo Messi. Real Madrid 2, both scored by Ruud van Nistelrooy. Well, Paul, one thing I would say, actually, is I would almost disagree with it. It's lived up to expectation. It's gone beyond expectation. I think there were quite a lot of us before the game thought, these are two clubs in crisis. This could be pretty poor compared to some years. But it's been absolutely brilliant so far. There have been errors. There have been mistakes, there's been tension. Well, that's it. It's partly been brilliant because the two sides have been kind of pretty poor in some ways. Marquez gets in well there. Diara, however, ahead of Ronaldinho, is lost out to Iniesta. Andres Iniesta to Ronaldinho. Iniesta goes down. No half-hearted appeals for a penalty. Well, he went down so far off the ball that... Because it was Ronaldinho who had the ball when Iniesta went down. Here is Ronaldinho, lovely little flick to Eto. It's again Iniesta. Opens it wide, Leo Messi, no offside. Messi misses! Well, once again, Barca found a way to open up that Real Madrid defence, but this time, Leo Messi didn't quite have the space to find the finish. I'll tell you what as well. I must confess that when Messi was, was played through there, I thought he was going to waste it, not because he wasn't going to find the finish, but that, that, that desire he had to put the ball on his left foot very, very nearly gave time for Higuain to come and take it off him. And I think because Higuain got close to him, he then couldn't open his body up enough to find a finish, but it's a poor miss, a very poor miss. Got to hit the target. Valdez touches the ball again. Goodness. But how many, how many chances, clear chances, have Barca created in this game in comparison to Real Madrid? You know, and yet, well, you still think Madrid can easily win this. Oh, absolutely. But Barca have had, Ica's made three good saves. Barca have had a couple of bad misses. Think about the Eto shot that was saved, the, mess, the Messi miss. We've seen this a million times, Just though, now, haven't we? That, that, and that, the header. We've seen it a million times that, that Real Madrid's... The player that keeps Real Madrid in games time and time again is Ica Casillas. That Barca, we've also seen it from the other side, which is we've seen Barcelona waste lots and lots of chances against lots of teams over the last two or three years. Tonight, in terms of the way they're moving the ball around, Barca look very, very good. In terms of the way they defend, they look like one of the worst teams I've ever seen. And long may it continue, by the way, because it's great fun. Ronaldinho gets the rebound. Well, what did he, he stop for? Why did he stop? Why did he stop? He could have got to that and he would have been clean through. Well, he's complaining about a foul, but you've got to play I, to I the whistle. I don't know if he thought about a foul or possibly a handball. Um, by the way, Mitchell's been under the sunbed rather a lot recently, hasn't he? What's he, what, what's what? he stopping for? I have no idea. Did he think because it hits his arm the referee was going to give handball? See, I can't see any reason for him to have stopped there. Even at all. if he has it, his hand, you carry on playing till the referee stops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, this is Oliguer a little bit nervy there. He is very definitely Barca's weak. Well, their entire defence is a weak point, but Oliguer in particular. Messi looks good tonight, doesn't he? I know he missed that Given that he scored twice, yeah. No, but I mean, in, in the way he's moving the ball, he's opening yeah. people up. He came of age, didn't he? That game, that 3 0 in the burn about yeah. last well, oh, November he was awesome. before last. He that was, was awesome. I actually think he's the best player in Spain at the moment. So do I. If he gets fully fit, I think this year the injuries have, have denied and him the Deco opportunity to prove Decker once again that. looking for that ball through the middle defence. But look, Madrid win the ball. Here's Higuain attacking a pace. Guti's in acres on the other side. Higuain is going to open that one up. He does indeed. Here's Guti. Looks to cut it inside. Decent ball. Turan makes the clearance. And he needed to because right behind him, Ruud van Nistelrooy had loads oh, of room. Oh, Undiano. ref. Gives Bass the free kick when he could have played the advantage this time. Yeah. I think he admits it. Terrible decision. Um, you're right, he admits it, which, which I like to see a referee that's at least got the, the communication skills to say, I'm sorry, yeah. Um, terrible decision from Barca point, but also from ours, because the game was flowing. I tell you what, as the longer this game progresses, Ronaldinho, well, he spoiled it with a pass, which went straight to Mitchell Salgado. What is going to be a question is fitness. Eto's coming off the back of his... Great tackle. Lovely Of, of tackle. his knee injury. Messi's been out for a long time with a broken bone in his foot. 
Ronaldinho's been a bit off and on this week, fitness-wise. And the Madrid side has been very, very poor fitness-wise. Diada's in recent struggling, weeks. Elgar and Iguain not been that fit. Van Nistel had a few problems, and they only played on Wednesday. It's, and, and, and also the game has become very intense, it's become very fast. I think actually, although we had that mad first 10 minutes, it wasn't mad in terms of pace, was it? It was just Madrid picking Barca off. But now with Barca really going at Madrid, it's become it's become very, very pacey as well. They've still got a spare man there. If, they, if, they, if Guti had been able to control that, Guti, by the way, making his 300th league appearance for Real Madrid and, today. And he's playing very, very well. Very well indeed. Why is that? Is he, could that be because he's been out of the team for a few weeks, games, and all of a sudden, yeah, Guti gets out of the team. He comes back. He plays well. I mean, I, you know, if if I'm honest, I'm not a Guti fan, all right. And and I I I've said lots of times that I don't think he's good enough for Real Madrid. And the reason I say that is precisely what you've just said. He plays brilliantly when he seems to feel under pressure. As soon as he's had three or four games, seems to disappear. Torres looking to advance in the space. Messi was aware of it. Gives it to Oliver. Probably going to fire it down the line. Poor it pass, but he got away with it, didn't he? Now he's Eto, who's playing more on the left side of... Well, left side, left wing, let's say, with Ronaldinho playing in the more centre-forward role. Here's Ronaldinho, just a little bit obstructed there, if he didn't, didn't think so. And Puyol, is it to Lilian Thuram? Back with Puyol. My Puyol, word, Puyol does look very, very uncomfortable on the left-hand side. He's, he's, he's definitely not left-footed, is he? Let's be honest about that. We've had nine minutes without a goal, sir. Have we? Yeah, That's yeah. wrong. <laughs> How can that be allowed? I think as well, you know, I, I know this sounds sort of perhaps a little over melodramatic given that there's a long way to go. I think Barca need to make this pressure count before half-time because I think at half-time when the two managers think about how they're going to approach the second half, Barca will find it harder in the second half to pick Madrid off. Um, Madrid have got... Hopefully, um, from Barcelona's point of view, Madrid will find it harder to pick Barca off because Barca will realise. But, at the moment, the momentum's with Barca. They need to make it count. There's Van Nistelrooy taking on Thuram. Looks up, two Real Madrid players advancing. Look at the space. It's Higuain looking to shoot. Higuain! Post, I think. Did that hit the outside of the I post? I think that hit the post, Paul. Once again, Barca's flimsy defence is keeping everybody... Nervous moments. They are. You know what? Barca's defence isn't flimsy. It's non-existent. Does that hit the post? I, I can't think, tell. I, think I thought it, does. it seemed like it was trying to, trying to see from this angle, maybe. Or maybe not. I think it just catches the outside of the post. Well, the referee's oh, given no, a it's corner. corner. I don't think, to be honest, I don't think Ballas touched it. I think it was the post. Guti. Taking his time. Three steps forward. Curls it into the box. Decent corner as well. Thuram. Slips at the wrong time, and oof, just as Higuain was winding it up. And offside. Great ball Dreadful as well. Dreadful defending again. Guti pulls it back. Ramos went down in the penalty area. But Yolpa had a great one too with the ref. And now Barca have the chance to counter-attack. Needs some more width, though. Ronaldinho. To Leo Messi, they've wasted it. Have they wasted it? Messi cuts inside. Ronaldinho, no offside, he looks up, far past, it's gone wide, oh, incredible. How did that not go in? I don't think it was Eto who shot, I think it was, I think it was Michel Salgado who had the shot uh, in, in commas because, and he's also cracked into the post. How well, did they not say. score that? This game, Paul, what a game we've got. I think Salgado was the one who got the touch, and if so, it's a fantastic interception ahead of Eto, but, but I will say, Deco, when he first went through the middle, had the easy ball through the gap to Eto, didn't take it. Took too long, there was nobody quite wide enough, was there? It just allowed Madrid just that time to get back, but Salgado, one of the bravest players around, you know, yeah. certainly has got to be said to take one for the team there. Yes. Um, I can't remember a time, uh, I honestly can't remember a time, I'm, I'm really, really genuinely trying to rack my brains at the moment to think of a player who is capable... Oh, here's the chance, that Ronaldinho looks up, picks his mark, I don't know. It's a foul from Eto actually. Eto completely takes Salgado out. I don't think he intends to, but it's a foul, isn't it? I think Eto gets the first touch. In fact, it's Eto's shot. Look, he takes Salgado out. I think, I think it does reflect off one of the players in the middle. And yeah, the referee's given a goal kick. So, so he clearly thinks that, Sal, uh, that Eto missed it. All right, Paul, I honestly Fabio think. Capel, I, Fabio Capello looks like the only man who's not enjoying this. I don't think he enjoys anything anymore except the ham. <laughs> um, honestly, really... been racking my brains. I can't think of a single player. Barca wasted that attack until it got to Messi. I don't think I've seen a player for years find space in a game where there's no space like Leo Messi does. The ball 
he, he's put the he's given the ball in a position where there isn't room in tight spaces. I've never seen anyone feel no. like it. Perhaps Romario, the only player I can remember having having the ability to do that. We've got five minutes until half time. It is two all in the camp now after what has been an incredible first half of football and. It's still on Real Madrid attack. Every time Madrid attack, they seem to have that extra man. It's Van Nistelrooy. Raul, no offside. What a shame that Van Nistelrooy didn't carry on because I tell you, he could have been clean through then. I'm surprised he didn't as well. So every time Madrid attack, they look like they're going to score. Yeah. Every, every time Barcelona attack, they create a chance. Yeah. Barcelona look like they're going to bring a save out of Casillas with every attack. Madrid, on the other hand, look like they're going to score with every attack. Eto. One touch too many there from Samuel Eto'o. And I don't think his teammates are very impressed with him. He did Salgado once, he thought he could do it again. He just allowed Ramos to make the challenge. Here in Real Madrid, Thuram. Robs the ball from Gago. Pujol. Deco's come into the game more in the last 15 minutes, the hasn't he? A lot more. He's getting a lot of the ball. Not seeing a huge amount of Xavi, but, um, but, but Deco's getting much more important. Capella will be thinking, second half, I can bring Robinho on. Oof. Run at this defence with Robinho. Oof, and yes, they got caught. Free kick for Barcelona, four minutes to the break. But Diara has put himself about a bit in yeah, this first 45. Diara's Diara been quite important to Real Madrid, I think. He's, he's broken a lot of Barca attacks down. And the other thing he's done, Diara, he's won a lot of free kicks. He's been the man fouled by Barca at least three or four times tonight. Ramos once again, just giving the ball away. Here's Deco. Four players around him. Torres sends it long. Because when Madrid are defending, it's almost like a Christmas tree, isn't it? One, yep. two, three, four at the back, three, two. Yeah, it's a perf perfect pyramid, isn't it? Four, three, two, one. Although at the moment the, 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 the two is at the top and the one just behind. But yeah, essentially it's four, three, two, one. Ronaldinho again, tangling with Ramos. Just, ooh, one ball from Messi. I tell you what, there's a case for a card there because I think yeah, Messi yeah, might have done that deliberately. Left-footed Argentinian using his hands. Here. Cheeky, wasn't it? And it was. Yeah, yeah. Madrid are taking their time with everything, which tells you something about about what two-two does to two teams. Barca want to win this. Madrid are thinking. I'm sure Madrid can think they'll be thinking they can win this. I'm though. sure they will, but they'll be thinking the way to win it is to is to shoot like that. Not a bad is, effort is, there. Is to frustrate Barcelona, get them irritated, defend well, and then break. And put pressure on Oliver, who's that's a bad, bad tackle. I think it, I don't think it's deliberate from Van der Rohe, but it is a bad tackle. But he knew it, didn't he? Rud had a well, yep. the, the face it said it all. He had a long yeah, face, didn't he? Did have a long face. Third Real Madrid player booked tonight. I was going to avoid that particular joke, Paul, but Oof. well, he goes, he goes in low, doesn't he? Yeah. Low and late. Ramos, Guti, and Van Nistelrooy. Who did he get booked, didn't he? Guti. Yeah. Yeah, I believe yeah, so, although yeah. I'm not 100% certain now. I just wonder if I completely lost track of things and put a little yellow card by the wrong player earlier on in the half. Here's Deco. <laughs> Got Gago ahead of him, he's into the area, pulls it back. Iniesta thinks about it! He can see us once again, saves Real Madrid. Great run from Deco, wasn't it? And a really clever pullback, although the one thing I would say is that Iniesta was a little far out to be finishing side-footed. Looked to pick his spot, and Ike got down without... Well, he got down, he was at a bit of a stretch, but it wasn't <laughs> the best save he's had to make tonight. Nice. Although it is about the fifth or the sixth. It's amazing, isn't it? You've got Ike Casillas, who week after week after week saves Real Madrid, and yet still, still the lingering feeling is that Capello doesn't rate him. What on earth is he thinking? Well, he has played every minute so far for yeah, the yeah. in the league. Because he hasn't got the goalkeeper he wants, Capello, because he wanted to try and buy one. But Oliver sailing like. very close to the wind. He's off, he's off because he's, he was booked in the penalty, wasn't he? Yeah. He's off. Oh, that's disaster for Barcelona. One minute before half-time, Oliver Presas picks up his second yellow card of the game. And Indiana Mayenko. Sent him in for the early bath.
there's not too much of a protest from the basketball players, is there? Because the protest is very much, oh, come on, is it really necessary? Rather than, you're wrong. Because I think deep down they know that... I think deep down they know that, uh, that that is a yellow card. If, if there's any doubt, there's more of a doubt in the one for the penalty. Because I think it's much more accidental. But the thing is, whenever you make a foul in the penalty area, the you get tend to book. It doesn't yeah. mean it should be, but I think it is because Guti's turned him and he's just left a foot in there. Let's have a look at the challenge. He's gone in there, I'm yeah, behind. He can't it, complain he at can't all. Complain. Um, I mean, Gago put a couple of extra rolls on, but there's no doubt that... Right, he goes in, he, you know. There's no doubt that that's a yellow card. And, and, and while it's a little unlucky from Oleguer, um, in the sense that basically he's just made two bad tackles that haven't been malicious, they've just been badly judged. Um, and in that sense, he's a little unlucky. But i tell you what, does that change the game? And we're back to the same thing, Paul. Barca missed chances, and are they going to pay for them? To be honest, I think they are. Well, if, if Madrid could score before the break, all of a sudden this game would take a massively different turn. And who's going to say they're not? Chiguat, Gago. It's crossed in there. Deco controls it. Leo Messi back in defence. Bundled over by Diara. You see, Crowder got to ask for a booking there. For example, well, this is what I was just about to say. Oleguer, now he deserved yellow for both. But they're two tackles that he's gone in honestly and misjudged it. Now, Diara, on the other hand... Deliberately takes him out. Has, has made four or five deliberate fouls, which have all been not very major, therefore not bookings. But you just sometimes wonder, don't you, if this, there should be some kind of provision in the rules for... Well, well, there is. You can book people. You know, you can yes, you book can. that for... But, but I just think the problem is that cards come out too easy for players who make an honest attempt to play the ball and get it wrong. No, I think Oleguer had to go, though. I think he did. Yes, yes. It... Xavi. Also well, well. booked. That no. was deserved. Xavi put his hand up. He knew immediately that he deserved it. And I think Barcelona might actually start to lose the plot a little bit yeah. here. The half-time whistle is probably going to come at the right time for Frank Rijkaard. So we still haven't seen how much injury time there'll be. We've had the 45 minutes up already. The crowd certainly... Yeah, it's a bad, bad challenge. That's, that's worthy of a yellow, yeah. no doubt at all. The fans are complaining, but there's no doubt that that's a yellow card. And that is the last action of the first half. Undiano Mayinko. Probably going to get whistled off the pitch after... Sending Oleguer off just a minute before the break. But he got it right, saying that. It's a shame because it could break the rhythm of what has been an incredible game of football. You know what it will do? I, I, I just wonder. I think Barcelona's um, footballing philosophy is such that they will keep attacking. But they I don't know for certain, but I suspect that what Barcelona will probably do to cover the, the, the sending off Oleguer, I think they'll play free at the back. And I think Marquez will go in at the centre, Pujol will be on the right, and Turam on the left. Or now, one, now, any just, combination of those. Just looking at teams coming out, Barcelona making the substitution. Silvino's it looks like Silvino is coming on. I'm not sure who They're playing four at the back then, Paul. Because they have taken Samuel Eto'o off, I think. Looking around. Yes, they have. Yep, they've taken Eto'o off. Well, that is... And they're bringing Silvino on. Right, so Marquez will stay in midfield rather than drop into the pack three. The one, thing, the one thing I suppose that would mean that that decision has some logic to it is perhaps Eto'o is shattered physically. He's been but I, I, think, I think tactically, it's a very strange decision. I don't, well, it's what he it's also think. slightly cowardly. Dan, if he wants to blow just three, though, what Silvino will do, he's been, out, he's been out injured for a while, he will give Barca a little bit more pace. Yes, he will, but you're taking a striker off. Ooh. Ah. I, I, tactically, I don't know. I don't know, I think... They've looked so open early on. If he'd have carried on and just dropped Marcus back, it would have just been inviting disaster. What happened in the game so far? Five minutes, Ruud van Nistelrooy put Madrid ahead. Messi levelled on ten. Literally, a minute later, Ruud van Nistelrooy foul. Converted a penalty given for a foul on Guti. Leo Messi levelled matters on 27 minutes. And then just before the break, Oleguer. Rash challenge on Gago. Got the second yellow card, and he's in the early bath. So Barca with 10 men, Real Madrid with all 11. Now I'll tell you what, though, Paul. Right, Barcelona will... Um, sorry, Real Madrid will feel maybe Barcelona are a bit, bit tighter, but Real Madrid's back four will be delighted to see that they've only got two, up, two forwards up against them. They will be delighted because they've been totally overrun in the first half, and I think they will think now... OK, we're, we're not, we're not going to struggle as much when Barca come forward. Those, those seven shots on target tell how much work Ike Casillas did, and because most of those were saves of real merit as well. Yeah, they weren't just easy saves, they were nearly all very good saves. Once again, Barca allowing Madrid space in attack early into the, into the half. The ball's knocked across, and... Well, Higuain, if he'd have 
just got his distribution right there. Or was it Torres racing there's, there's another thing. That, you know what? There's another thing. Not just if he got his distribution right. If Torres had been a more dishonest player, there was a penalty in that. There was a foot very, very close to him, and he tried to get out the way. If he if he carried on, he could easily have won a penalty there. Barca look maybe as if Iniesta's going to play a little bit more in a wide on the right now. With Messi moving a little bit more into the centre and Ronaldinho on the left. I, I just think that, that the one thing that's never been never been changed all year with Barcelona, in, in, in the midst of changing lots of things, is that they have always, always played with three up front. And I just think that only playing two up front is just going to change the way... It's going to change everything about the way they play in terms of the creativity. Yeah, but surely it's suicide to play with three strikers when you've got only ten men. At maybe. the moment, you maybe just don't allow, you know, maybe you want to change later on, yeah. But at the moment, let's just keep things a little bit tight. Barca are never going to play really defensive football anyhow. As Ramos got booked in the first half for a rather unpleasant hack at Ronaldinho. Diara, who didn't get booked, although he could have rather probably committed more fouls than anybody in the game. Turam gets up well, Marquez. I think we're already seeing um, that there isn't the, the movement and the fluidity in Barcelona. Admittedly, it's very, very early, it can, it can come back, but it just doesn't... The, the frenetic pace that was there at the end of the first half has they, already been taken they're out. They really up to it, didn't they? After about 15, 20 minutes, Deco came into things. There's the Portuguese player now. And it was wonderful to watch for 15 minutes or so, wasn't it? Really fantastic to watch. Great work from Van Nistelrooy. There's Ramos surging through. Sergio Ramos looking up on the far side. And Valdez called into action, and once again, Iguain. Good touch, Miguel. In the right place, yeah. Yeah, if he got a good touch there, that he would have, he would have probably scored. At the very least, he should have drawn a save from Valdez. It's very, very so, poor I mean, touch. Again, we're saying Barca could perhaps be clear and in with open, in open water, but Real Madrid, they've had good chances. Yes, they have. Good situations. Three minutes gone in the second half, Real Madrid carving out the first opportunity of the second period. Probably the first save Valdez has actually made. There was a shot from Higuain in the first half, it was just a stupid deflection off Durham, I was watching yep. at half-time. Yeah. I mean, that one, in the end, Valdez didn't have to make a, a save in the sense of the shot, but he, he had to be out quickly. But, honestly, a, a decent touch from, from Higuain and, uh, and they'd have been in big trouble, Barcelona. And, and look, Bar look, Barca are struggling, aren't they, to get out of this area? Well, it's what Madrid did against Getafe, they up to gear in the second half. Uh, I, but I think, I wonder if it's less, less Madrid up in a gear, more Barca dropping one, and not having the, 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 the ability to, to chop and change up front because they've got a man less. Now they're going to get caught. Oof, offside flag up, I'm not sure about that one. It certainly isn't against Gago, who was a guy running through. It may have been against Raul. I don't know if it had got to it, but... Again, Barca living dangerously. He's a going to dive his boots on right card, isn't he? <laughs> Certainly, yeah. Here can Real Madrid again. Lovely work from from Iguain, but the touch there poor from Guti and there Marquez giving the ball away. Can Iguain finish over the bar from the young Argentinian? He's only scored one goal since arriving in Madrid in December. Wasn't a bad place to score it though, it was in the Calderon, you may remember, four weeks ago. Well, if that goal had gone in, it would have been time to take out Valdez, take out Marquez, and give them one hell of a talking to, because Valdez should have come and got that ball, he didn't. Marquez then, having finally realised that Valdez wasn't going to, and it wasn't his fault initially, then cleared so badly. They just gave it to Guti. Awful. Sort of game that Guti must be relishing. Nobody's really snapping at his ease. He's finding space for his passes. There he is once again. This time Deco's onto him quickly. Ronaldinho. Chance for Barca perhaps to advance. A little bit slower there. Xavi. Not had a great game tonight, Xavi Hernandez. No, he hasn't. And in the Esther, although he's playing on the right, he's, he's quite deep, isn't he, so far this half? Oh, lovely footwork from Messi. Madrid organised in defence now, playing and everyone back. But the way they, they defend with that first line of defenders, it means that they can break quickly, like now. <laughs> Barca players getting sucked in, Madrid. Oof, that's a very, very, very late from Deco, very late indeed. 
Another booking for Barcelona. Deserve it as well. Yeah, yeah, Very deserve it. it. What have we got for Barca? Two yellows and the subsequent red for Oliga. Deco, Xavi and Marquez all booked by Uliano Mayenko. It's a very poor challenge from Deco, isn't it? Real Madrid have had Ramos, Guti and Van Nistelrooy. That's yeah, late, isn't it? Five minutes gone in the second half. Once again, the tension has returned to the stands in the camp now. Barcelona 2, Real Madrid 2, but Barca defending like novices and down to 10 men. I mean, and, and how often have we said it? I mean, we said it that often that it's become a cliche, but, but when you have lots and lots of chances and you don't take them, you so often pay for it. And Barca, you know, they, they, they've allowed Madrid two goals, really. But then they created two great goals themselves, but they really should have scored more before half-time. They're now down to 10 men, and you just wonder if that opportunity has gone now. Now, they should carve out a few decent chances between now and the end of the match, but they were through, going through a spell, 15 minutes or so, where they had Madrid on the ropes and they, they, they really could have killed them off. There's Iniesta to Ronaldinho, he's got Ramos ahead of him. Good work from Ramos, looking at the 1-2. Leo Messi to Ronaldinho. Oh, oh just over hits his pass there, Iniesta has to chase it wide. He's got Ramos behind him. And that's gone for a... Goal kick. Goal kick, I think correct decision. Yeah, I think it's a correct decision. Fans don't like it, but I think that was right. This is races the ball. Another superb performance from Ike. If you hadn't been for him in Munich on Wednesday, Madrid would have probably received a hatful in the first half. How many times have we said that? You know, if it hadn't been for Casillas, I mean, game after game after game, he saves the side. He, he, you know, I think he has has faults as a goalkeeper, particularly in the in the air crosses and so on. There's never a foul in that, never in a million years. Um, but when it comes to shot stopping, Casillas, he, he moves so fast, his reflexes are so oh, good. I'm looking, at the, I'm looking at the replay of the Messi goal, the second Messi goal, and he's not that far away from it. Here is Gago, young Argentinian, in his first Clasico. To his fellow countryman Higuain, chance for Gago. Gives it wide to Salgado, once again Turam with a header. Deco, the Barca just not quite got that pace in Diara. I thought Deco dived. I but thought Deco dived. The one thing the fans are upset about is that they've seen Diara make lots and lots of fouls and they think he should be booked by now. But I thought Deco well, dived that time. Don't like to see all the Barca players asking for a booking for Diara. But the well, fact is, he, he let's Deco, have a look. Deco goes around the back of him. It's a strange one, isn't it? I'm not. I'm not clear if Diara is falling or... Uh, the thing is, there was, the, there was a foul early in the, just bef between the sending off and Xavi's book at the end of the first half when he obstructs, pushes over Messi who had a counter-attack. Could have been booked for that because it's a cynical foul. And the fact is, maybe each one of these fouls on its own isn't deserving of a yellow, but he's done about four or five of them. Yeah. And referees, as you say, are allowed to book players for, for reiteration of fouls. If we thought about giving the advantage there... Diara, a lucky man perhaps, Mamadou Diara. Here's Deco again taking on the Mali International. Opens it out wide nicely. It's Leo Messi taking on Miguel Torres. Skips over Guti's leg. So looking for movement. Ronaldinho active tonight. To Ram under pressure, he's done well there, the Frenchman. <laughs> he did do well, but honestly, he was on the edge, wasn't he? Just got caught by Gago, but the Argentinian sportingly apologises. Well, there's no way that wasn't a foul, is it? The referee gives the free kick Real Madrid's way. Diara hits the dust. Well, hits the dirt rather than the dust. It ain't that dusty out there. I thought Ramos, the, the thing that started that move, Ramos had hit Ronaldinho pretty hard, I thought. It's a bad challenge for Messi, isn't it? Mm. Perhaps a little lucky to get away with that. But I think in the general chaos, he wasn't going to just just book one player there, Undiano Mayenko, 33-year-old referee, generally considered to be the best referee in Spain, although not by the crowd in the camp now, if you can hear, <laughs> <laughs> if you can hear the background noises. They're all shouting, off, uh, off, off. 
Well, that's one of those fouls that, that, that's just been given against Xavi for a foul on Gutti, where, where basically the player looks for the contact, goes down, and, and in a way the referee has to give it, but it's so frustrating because you know that the foul is actually created by the guy who gets fouled, not the other way around. Well, as it is, here's Raul. Twisting and turning into the penalty area, Raul, and once again, Thuram. In the right place when Madrid looked as if they were going to get at least a shooting chance out of that. 10, 11 minutes gone in the second half, still 2 all. But Madrid perhaps looking more likely to now. Yes. And the game has changed with that Oliver sending off. And it's such a shame because Barca were... I mean, we still had a great game in terms of Madrid had chances as well, but Barca were playing such great football the way they were going forward and, and so awful at the back. I think there would have been loads and loads of goals in it. As it is, I still think there may well be goals in this. Offside, both of those two. Yeah, offside flag raised by the linesman. Barca once again moving the ball quickly. It's with Iniesta. a big question mark is how long are these players going to last physically Ronaldinho's not been in great nick all week he didn't train on Thursday trained on his own for half a Friday Messi of course recovering from a from a foot injury will he be able to last 90 minutes I think he might have to yeah look on yeah. the bench Madrid have Barca already brought in Silvino they've got Belletti Gujonson Edmilson Esquero and Saviola on the bench well, your money I think Esquero's just that sort of still a seat, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> he certainly isn't there for any, any tangible get, football. Don't race. get your hopes up, son. You know. Yeah. Um, I think you know, your obvious choices there are, are, are Saviola and Good Johnson, aren't they? But yeah, I mean, we did have got some interesting options. I could have got Emerson, defensive midfielder, Robinho, Marcelo, the young left back. We saw come on against Getafe, Cassano, Mejia, and De La Red. So you look at that and you think, well, Robinho, Cassano, and De La Red. They would give extra attacking impetus to Madrid if Capello fancies going for it. Yeah, and I think I think they give it for two very, very obvious reasons, particularly look at Cassano and Robinho. Robinho gives a very, very good attacking option because he's quick and he runs at people and he draws fouls. He makes a lot happen. Cassano, given that Barca are so open, nobody in the Madrid side can play a ball through a gap for someone to run onto like Cassano can. Nobody has that clever cleverness, that, that speed of thought that Cassano has. Camp now trying to space on the right if he sees it. Trying to inspire Barca, singing the hymn. The ball's pulled back. Can Messi get in there? He nearly did his control, just letting him down for once. And here come Real Madrid on the break. How many times have we said that tonight? And how many times have we said we've found space? Although that's not a particularly great ball for Raul, who has to backtrack. Diara. He blindly wanted the ball played through. So he goes to Van Nistelrooy once again. The offside flag is up, and it's up quickly. And he, did up well there. he did well there, didn't he, Van Nistelrooy? Controlled the ball very nicely. It was a nice run. And I'm not 100% sure about the offside, you know. No, I think it was. It was. Deco being pressured once again, but he's pushing hard upfield. To Ram. Brings the ball rather gracefully out, doesn't he? Yeah, gracefully, but I suspect from Barcelona fans' point of view, rather nervously <laughs> for them. He's been shuffling in the seats in the camp now. Barca trying to be intelligent and keep possession. <laughs> Sometimes, however, they do cut it fine. I just think, I mean, I, I know, you know, you're absolutely right that, that you play free up front, maybe, maybe you're taking a risk, but I just think Barca, the entire year, they've played free up front. The way they play is, is based on that. The way the movement works is based on free up front. Since they've changed, I think they've looked, they looked like, they've looked stunted. They don't look like they're going to create anything up the top. But they now. look like a team that knows they'll play down. I'm just looking down on the bench. Robinho. Robinho getting ready to come on. There's Guti. Diara. Poor ball from, from the number six. I think Deco took a bit of a tumble there. Silvino makes the interception, throwing for Real Madrid, and Capello should will use it. Should be Raul. Tactically, I think it should be for well, Raul. it is indeed. There he goes, Raul Gonzalez. Who, incidentally, I think has had a very poor game indeed. We saw him doing a little bit in the, in the Barca box a few minutes ago, but we haven't really seen much of Captain Fantastic tonight, have we? No, and, and quite honestly, the, the Barcelona back four, well, the back four, back three, the Barca back three will be looking at Robinho and thinking, oh, <laughs> um, I mean, what he did against Getafe last week, 
He was great, he was quick, he opened up spaces. He didn't give the final ball. No, he didn't, but Barca are, are, are so open that, that he's going to make them really, really shaky, really nervous. And I'll tell you what, I think more than anything else, with Robinho on the pitch and Barca backtracking and allowing themselves to be pushed right into their own penalty area, there's a penalty in here. There's a penalty in the waiting with Robinho. Well, we've, just to remind you, Barca, five points ahead of Real Madrid in the league. Sevilla are seven points ahead of Madrid, if I'm not mistaken. Madrid, if they lose tonight, are basically out of the race for the title. Barca, however, they need to win, otherwise Sevilla are going to start opening up a little bit of a gap. Robinho. And at last, Real Madrid have pace. Robinho. Well, exactly. I mean, so far they haven't needed it, to be honest. No, no, Although you do look at those, some of those counter-attacks they've had and you think to yourself, if they'd had pace as well, perhaps they could have uh, could have found Barca out even more than they have done. Exactly. Next week, just to, to let you know, we will be in the Bernabeu on Sunday night. Real Madrid against another Catalan team, Gymnastic Tarragona. Gymnastic who actually picked up the bottom, second from bottom, picked up their form in recent games. I think they've only beaten in four so far, but they've got to play Sevilla tomorrow. It'll be interesting to see if Javier Portillo can do it against his former club. Ronaldinho. And Iniesta. It's the one-two, Andres Iniesta, can he pull the finish? Scramble clear, and here come Real Madrid. Thuram's drawn in there, did well there, the Frenchman, a vital challenge. There is another problem, I think, Paul, with the way, the way that Barcelona have set this up, to try and protect themselves, but also have something going forward. They've moved Iniesta to the right-hand side, mm -hmm. and they've moved Messi centrally. Nice. And, and although Iniesta has just created this chance, Iniesta isn't as comfortable on the right as in the middle. He's not as decisive on the right as in the middle. By the same token, I don't think Messi has been anywhere near as decisive playing in the middle than when he's been coming in off the wing, as he was doing in the first half. In the first half, we saw him get behind Miguel Torres time and time again. In the second half, he's up against Sergio Ramos, and he's shown no sign whatsoever of getting past him. Ramos has bullied his way through this match, hasn't he? Does in a lot of matches. Marquez. Xavi. Lovely oh, turn. lovely turn from Ronaldinho. Here is the Brazilian into the area. He looks for that one. It's with Messi. Ronaldinho picks himself up. In hard on Guti. Does well there, Guti. Sorry, Robinho. Robinho did very, very well. A long way up here. He did very, very well indeed, Robinho. Capella will be pleased to see that, won't he? Complete, keeps moaning that Robinho doesn't defend. Hang on. No offside, Puyol against Van Nistelrooy, is with Van Nistelrooy! Oh, Valdez, what a great save from Victor Valdez! That is an unbelievably well, good we've, save. Well, we've basically given some of the plaudits to Ica tonight, but Valdez... That is an unbelievably good save. Shows that he has nothing to envy Ica Casillas with what is... An outstanding save, because Van Nistelrooy does nothing wrong there. In terms of his body shape, I think Valdez got it wrong, because he goes to ground but he has the peace of mind to get his hand up and make a very, very good save. And that is where Barca will get caught tonight. Well, again. Again. <laughs> I'm saying it as if it's something new, it's not new. Um, what a great save. That is a fantastic save. And, and Barca, you see, Barca are just not getting the ball, they're just not making anything happen at the moment. I think Rijkaard has got it wrong again, tactically. Oh, oh, he's been booked before. He's a lucky boy, is Deco, because he's been booked before. There's certainly been challenges like that that have been penalised. And Diana, yes, this have. time... <laughs> that's, a, that's a dreadful... The that only, should be only, another yellow. Yeah, the only thing I'll say maybe in Deco's favour is he doesn't actually put his foot right up and across it, but he certainly... <laughs> Does enough, doesn't he? Kuram as well again. And once again, oh. brings the ball out magnificently. Pick at the Barca defence tonight, actually, Kuram. There's been a Barca defence. <laughs> Not maybe that hard, but... Barca don't have a defence tonight. Oh, Puyol, poor clearance. The Salgado. A little bit lucky this time, Kuram, and nearly got caught. Xavi. See, Ramos. Ronaldinho, the, the pace has gone out of Ronaldinho's game a little as well. He's, he's not winning the ball as much as he was, which we always expect. Now, Diarra 
for sheer number of fouls, is treading a very, very fine line indeed. In fact, I think that may well be. Well, at last. And I wonder if he actually only got it, though, because Deco kicked up such a fuss. Quite possibly, because the referee has to be aware of that sort of sense of... But it's about... It's, it's another... And it's, not, it's not a huge foul. I it's mean, that, about the sixth or seventh he's done, isn't it, though? That foul is not worthy of a yellow card on its own. It's, it's because of what's gone before that he's been booked for that, the other. 21 minutes gone, two all in the camp now. Madrid looking the team more likely to win it, though. They've had four players booked, who are Ramos, Diarra, Guti and Van Nistelrooy, Barca, down to ten men, Oliguer for two yellows. They've also got Deco, Xavi and Marquez on a booking, and here they're going to have another chance as well. Gago's going through the middle, and this Van Valdez makes another save to deny Van Nistelrooy. The thing that's worrying for Barcelona, Paul, quite apart from the fact that that's a very good save, a much better save than it looked um, first time, I must confess, he was, he, he's stretching fur, further towards his post than I, than I first realised. They're just the not doing anything, are The they, thing though? that's worrying for Barcelona isn't they're getting caught like this, although that's worrying, but they're not creating anything at the other end. Iguain's running into the area, Van Nistelrooy, Valdez is turned! Three out of three for Victor Valdez! Well, if in the first half Iker Casillas saved Real Madrid, in the second, Valdez is earning the plaudits. Yes, he is, and, and as I say, Barca's big problem is, yes, they're poor at the back, they saw that in the first half, but if they concede, you can't see them getting the goal back now, whereas in no. the first half you could. Diara, is he going to line up the shot? It's an intelligent pass, it's a great pass, Guti controls it. And it's gone for a corner. And when Ramos and Higuain got to the far post then, when Guti had the ball, there was, yet again, no one anywhere near them. Well, it looks like as if Rijkaard's preparing another substitution. But you see, I, I'd like to think that Rijkaard has the brains to, to not just say, hang on, to not just say we're getting caught at the back, therefore we must reinforce at the back. But part, part of the problem is they're not creating any real football either. No, no, they really struggled that... Sending off Oliguer has been a crucial factor in the game. Once again, Guti in acres of space, and they've all stormed out the Barca defence and left him on his own. He's got Robinho inside him, he's pulled it back, he's in wide. Time to control, pick his spot! And it's in the arms, the safe arms of Victor Valdez. I must confess, I think Iguain made a horrible blunder there by not shooting first time and by trying to pull it onto his other foot. He had time. Messi. With Xavi Hernandez, Deco, Ronaldinho. It's a very, very, very bad pass from Ronaldinho. And the substitution is Balletti, Paul. Now it's a full back. I think Rijkaard has got it wrong time and time again tonight. He might just go back to 4 4 2, though, because he's seen how much. I think he space. will, but, but then who. A 4 4 1, even. But then you're still not going to create anything up front. They're not creating anything, Barcelona. Yeah, but Madrid, on the other hand, are. But they're getting found out time and time again at the back, and maybe Rijkaard is thinking, look, a point is a point. Maybe he is, maybe he is, in which case it's very unlike him, because one of the things about Barca is they've always gone for the victories. And, and, and I, I wonder if they may well be thinking exactly that. Uh, let's, let's not lose this, because it's not just a point is a point. They'll a go point is a point, and it's three points that Madrid haven't got. And they'll get five points, they'll go to bed. Oh, and Diano Ayinko, great challenge, sets Real Madrid up on the break. Lovely challenge from Iniesta, though, made up for it. <laughs> Oof, if that had gone, if they had Madrid had carried on that attack and scored, the referee would have struggled to get out of the ground alive. Xavi again. <laughs> Messi. Ronaldinho asking for someone to come and get the ball. What was the referee doing there? He did one in the first half. I can't remember who it was now. A Barcelona player played a 1 2 off the referee's legs. But. That his position was poor, the referee, all throughout that move, because he actually got in Deco's way just before that as well. Once, look at the break. Look at once them. again, three against three. That's a poor ball. Robinho's going to get there first. He's being pressured by Iniesta, and Silvino makes a cracking challenge. Ah, and Salgado. I don't know if he actually made contact, but the very way he went in. The ref went straight for his pocket. It's yellow. And the man going off is Deco. Is that because he's worried about the, uh, another yellow card? 
Watch well, Salgado saying he died, but I think if Salvini, Salvini hadn't actually taken evasive action then, he'd have been um, cut in half, wouldn't he? Yeah. Well, I'm prepared um, to give... Obviously, you have to give all coaches the benefit of the doubt, Raikkonen, and I'm not entirely sure what, what he's trying to do with that change. I guess shore things up at the back with a full-back who may also attack a bit, but I think Frank Raikkonen tonight, tactically, has really, really got it wrong. If you lots were going to take time. a central midfielder off, maybe Xavi would have been the player to take off. He just wasted the ball again. Guti ro robbing it. He's got Belletti in front of him. Looks up. Marquez misses it. Valdez off his line. And once again, Madrid had the chance. And the final control just letting them down in what is another roller coaster half of football. And, and once again, the guy who's controlled let him down is Higuain. And once again, though, the man who created it and the man Barca have never dealt with all matches, Guti, who's been superb tonight. Robinho. No, 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 no. And it's disappointing, that foul, more than anything else, because it's, it's cutting the flow of the game. And, and... Well, what a match. What a match. A little hand across there from Marcus. 26 minutes gone in the second half. It's still 2-0. That's a bad Barca start, down to 10, it? yeah. Barca down to 10 minutes. And feeling it, let's be honest. Really feeling it. They really are. They're creating nothing. Yeah, you do get the feeling if Madrid could score, this is not a bad chance for them with Ramos in there. If Madrid score, how will Barca get back into the game again? They've already done it twice, but I think a third time may be beyond them. Booty, good delivery. And it's gone in. 3-2. To Real Madrid, and it's Sergio Ramos who has got the goal. Out jump Puyol, got a flick on it, and this time Valdez could do nothing about it. And as you just said, Paul, I cannot see Barca getting back into this. I cannot see him getting back into it. They've been caught out time and time again, and I just can't see him getting back. 73 minutes gone. Sergio Ramos put Real Madrid in the lead. Out jumped, out fought, out battled Puyol there, didn't just, they? Just he's physically stronger. Puyol's in the wrong position. I mean, he, Ramos doesn't know a huge amount about where the ball's actually going, but great delivery from Guti. Guti's had a superb game. Guti has had a really, really good game tonight. So his 300th game in the Primera Liga, and Alguero's not, not upset about things either. So Barca, they've created nothing in the second half. They're going to have to create something in these remaining 17 minutes. Or they're going to suffer their second defeat to Real Madrid in the last five years. Well, that's nice from Messi, from Iniesta and Messi. Iniesta lines it up, takes a deflection. Xavi. Bounces away from Marquez. Goes to Turam. He's got Belletti out wide. Here he is. Giuliano Belletti. He's got past Guti's challenge. Guti's just sort of standing there watching. And once again, the Madrid central defence. Standing firm. Puyol to Silvino. Great again from Iniesta. All the way. Can he go? Iniesta wide. Great run, great run, but Iniesta is a man who who just, you know, he just tends not to quite finish off the, the, the superb moves that he starts, that he creates. It's basically, that's one of the first shots Barca have had in this second half. Good defending from Salgado, just got in and yeah. closed the route off, didn't he? Yeah, he did, he did. Well, you can't say, you could see that, that goal, that third Madrid goal coming. But I must confess, I wasn't expecting it to come quite from that from that way. No, I thought it would come on a break. But of course, you know, when you when you give away a free kick and when you're so poor defending free kicks as Barca have been all season, you're, you're vulnerable. And the amazing thing as well is that how can you get caught out by Real Madrid when they only have one player who's good in the air? Ramos is the only player who ever wins any headers. And Madrid now with an extra man. And Barca really having to attack again, you know, as I was saying. A point wouldn't have been bad for them. The way things are, a point wouldn't be bad. But Madrid now can keep possession. Move the ball around. And look to kill it off. Get a fourth. Duram. 
Turam has been very, very cool at the back. Um, sometimes kind of worryingly so, I think, from Barcelona's point of view. I think with four Turams, Barca probably wouldn't be losing. I think that's true. I think Puyol's had a very poor game again. Um, well, because he, positionally he's not great at the best of times. Positionally he's, he's not great, great, but if you've got only three defenders, that positional weakness is even more exactly. evident. Because with four defenders, you're a bit positionally weak, but there's less space to cover. With three defenders, you're positionally weak, there's more space to cover. It's virtually impossible to cover that space. And Iniesta again, Droll hadn't gone out. Because it's a Xavi Hernandez. Ronaldinho has gone a bit quiet in the second half. Here's Messi. Once again, Ronaldinho looks for the little back heel. He murmurs with Ronaldinho now. Bundles into... Bundles into Guti. We've just still got two substitutes to use. Would you like to see Emerson? <laughs> um, I mean, Capello's instinct naturally is going to be defensive, but um, what they have to do is just keep possession, but move I, the ball I, around. If right? I was Real Madrid, I, what's he doing, Puyol? Oof. If I was Real Madrid, um, Fabio Capello's position, I wouldn't make any changes unless anyone's particularly tired. And then I'd be making a like for like change only. Captain Caveman's hand from Puyol surging forward. Here's Balletti. He's got the better of Torres, perhaps, but Torres makes a good challenge. We get it was a surprise to see him not get away there. A long throw, Ramos wins it. That's not turned out that badly at all. Robinho. Not really been involved in the game that much. And there he's got a rather needless free kick, Barca. Do you think Barca sometimes take their free kicks needlessly quickly, where they don't actually gain any advantage from them? Yes, that's true, but the one thing that that sort of stands in their defence for doing that is it, what's the, the other option is to put the ball in the box. They haven't got anyone <laughs> in the box who's going to do anything with it, really. Except maybe Marquez, here he is on the ball. I mean, Ronaldinho's reasonably strong in the air, but, but he's strong in the air when the cross is coming, not when you sort of launch an aimless ball into the box. Madrid shutting up shot quite efficiently in these last few minutes. Messi, out-jumped by Marquez. By Ramos, Marquez, and Ica! Good save. Palms it over the bar. Very good save. Just dropped nicely for Marquez there, didn't he? Thumped in a dipping shot. Ica powers it for a corner. 13 minutes to go in the camp now. It's still... One of those games where anything can happen, but I do fancy Madrid now to sneak uh, it. I, I don't, I, 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 I really, great. really don't see Real save. Madrid scoring, uh, Barcelona scoring rather. Good effort though from Marcus, just a little bit too low. 33 minutes gone in the second half, Real Madrid leading by three goals to two in a quite remarkable game of football here in Barcelona. And you're watching it live in high definition on World Sport as Barca try to save something from this game. Whoops, Daisy. That wasn't good from Marquez. And it's three against something. two. Here's Guti. Can he celebrate his 300th game in the best possible style? Van Nistelrooy took too long. He could have had a hat trick. Could have had a hat trick, yeah. Big wine chases it out. Throw in for Real Madrid and Capello. Not best please because they had a three on two there, Real Madrid. He should have killed the game off. Looks like Good Jonsson's going to come on for Barca. Well, that's the logical choice. Not least because he gives Barca a different kind of option up front. I don't know who he's going to come on for, though. You know what? If I was Rijkaard, and this wouldn't be a popular change, I'd take off Puyol. Oof, Valdez, good save from Robinho. I'd take off Puyol because you've got two fullbacks, two around in the middle. You've got to take that risk now. Well, Barca have ten minutes. Unless he, unless he thinks Messi is too tired, but I think Messi has got so much quality. Ronaldinho cuts inside. Siniesta. Andres Iniesta lands at the shot once again, just wide of the post. He kicks Casillas. He'll say he had it covered. He was at full stretch. I think if that had been on target, he'd have got there. This is Marquez he's taken off. Semi-logical. I think that last touch from Marquez probably sealed his fate. 
And De La Red's coming on, presumably for Vanish Roy Higuain, I would guess. Uh, for Guti. Guti's had a very, very good game indeed well, tonight. Very, very good game. Well, decisive in, well, in the penalty. And in the cross, uh, that third it, Real Madrid goal. It, here comes uh, so that Jimmy Jump, as usual. That's some idiot, running yeah. on the pitch, being an idiot. And if he's a Barca fan, which clearly he is, because he's going towards um, Turan, he's not actually doing, he's not doing his team any favours whatsoever, is he? Well, no, I can't quite see what, what shirt he's got, you know. Well, he looks like somebody who I'm really good talking to once the cameras are allowed to turn off. It's the last thing you want when you're trying to focus on a football game is some idiot like that breaking things up, breaking up the concentration. Ruben de la Red on. Very impressive, I thought, against Metafe last week. Another long haired central midfielder for you to deal with. Yuppie. Glad Ramos has gone for the white headband this week. It does yeah. make him a little bit easier to pick out from a distance. Puyol back to Belletti. 37 minutes gone now. I suspect there'll be three or four minutes of injury time. It's Barca. Struggling to find an equaliser. Very quick. Because looking at this, if Madrid do win, that will mean they're only two points behind Barca. Barca away next week. Madrid at home against Nastic Barca. Have to win. Because if yep. Madrid win, Madrid go ahead of them on that individual and goal how, average. How ridiculous would that be, given the way the two teams have played this not year? Not in the second half tonight, though. No, not in the second half tonight, definitely not. And that, that's absolutely right. In the second half, Madrid have certainly, certainly deserved this. Xavi with the free kick. It's a decent one. Good. Johnson gets a Tertica! Well, he's certainly got a hefty well, whack there for his pains. Ronaldinho looks a bit nervous. Well, at least he's conscious. Well, I don't that, think he's in any hurry, is he? Brave save from Ike Casillas there. Was it Messi who was in there or Iniesta? It, it, I think it was Messi, the first one. It dropped, dropped to Ronaldinho. And Ronaldinho challenging in on Ike. But Johnson did well, and he just didn't drop. I thought, why did Puyol turn his back? I think it just hits Puyol on the way through. But he turned his back, didn't he? Well, I'm not even sure that should be a corner, actually. But Good it's save, as it turns out, isn't it? Again. <laughs> That's a throw in, actually. Real Madrid throw in, in fact. So, what we're saying about three or four minutes, I think. I think that makes it probably four, if not four or five. Yeah, but we've we've been through this so many times this season, haven't we? Where realistically the time added on should be should be well in the fours and fives, maybe even six sometimes. And referees just seem very very reluctant to give that much time. Even though most fans would love them to give an extra twenty minutes, they're enjoying it. Barca fans probably not enjoying it that much. The Real Madrid fans, yeah, but however, they need the time, don't they? The Real Madrid fans are probably loving every minute of it, but probably want it as you say to end as soon as possible because their team a winning by three goals to two in the Camp Nou Stadium against the old enemy, Barcelona. There's Gago. Nice pass to Higuain. A little bit careless there from the number 20. Got a good future ahead of him, but he's not the finished product yet, is no, he, he's Gonzalo not. Higuain? he's not. Six minutes to go. Barcelona need a goal desperately, and the fans are quiet. They've not really got behind them at all. There was a couple of moments before Madrid's third goal where they got the, they sang the old Barca hymn. But, but it's, they, you know, if you consider that, consider the Liverpool fans on Wednesday yeah. night. You know how well, even when they were hanging on at the end, you could hear you never walk alone with yeah. Barca. There's 98,000 people in here, and maybe they are walking alone. Well, I think there's some some truth in that. I think a lot of Spanish sides. This is something that fans fans react to the team. They don't try and help the team react. Ronaldinho, great work from Diara. Good Johnson gets into the area. Salgado. Silvino. That's to the truck. Tricky footwork. He's not got any options for a pass though. 
in the end, but careless from Madrid. Belletti slips, gets up. Good pressure. Real Madrid really working hard these closing minutes to deny Barca space, and Barca can't get that ball into the penalty area. Thoran has to bring it forward. Because those sort of balls are meat and drink to the Madrid defence. Good Jonsson. Once again, the referee nearly in the way. Ronaldinho skips past one challenge. Messi's touch lets him down. He gets into the area. Great challenge. No question of it being a penalty. Well, I, think there, I think there's a question for the fans. <laughs> no way is it a penalty. <laughs> there was definitely a question for the fans, but I think you're right. I don't think it was a penalty. And Messi just physically just suffering a little bit in the second half. Again, Ooh. Ronaldinho didn't gamble. He didn't push himself into the area when the ball was coming across the face of the, the goal. Puyol, not what he wanted, is it? It's with Higuain, and now Rona Robinho. Goes straight for the heart of the Barca defence, Robinho. One little bicycle step, second one, Inada. Silvino. Back to Turam. It's a careless pass. Silvino had too much to do there. It's a throw in for Real Madrid. And you get the feeling that the game is slipping away from Barca. Here's that challenge. Nah, it's a good it's one. A good it's a good challenge from Torres. Not just that, you get the feeling it slipped away from the minute that Oliger yep. thumped into Gago at the end of the first it, half. It fell away at half time, but it needn't have done. I really do think that tactically they've got it all wrong. And, and I must confess, before the game, Paul, I thought Real Madrid had got it wrong tactically. And, and in a way, I still stand by that. Because I feel like if Robinho had played the whole game, they might have really, really, really put Barca out of sight. Particularly if he played instead of Raul, who, despite the fact that Madrid looked dangerous on the break, has done very, very little. With Johnson as well, Ramos, spectacular overhead clearance. He'll be getting a lot of front pages tomorrow, Sergio Ramos. Okay, the Barca papers will certainly remind every their readers of the clattering foul he did on Ronaldinho in the first half. Another foul from Salgado, 43 minutes on the clock, Barca. A goal behind, taking it quickly. Once again, the Madrid defence standing very firm. Some Madrid can do, it's defend. Gago and Iniesta play on, says the referee, it's Leo Messi. Leo Messi! Bit of a slice on that one, goal kick. Barcelona are not going to do this, and they haven't been going to do it since the second half started. I think that's a corner, I think. I think it's just a little deflection of Ramos. As it is, Ike Casillas is taking the goal kick. It's very interesting to see how the Madrid press deals with Fabio Capello tomorrow. Well, all course, of a sudden, he's the man who <laughs> saved his job, isn't he? <laughs> they've been trying to hammer him for weeks, and frankly, I think with some justification. But, but you know, you, you beat Barcelona and everything changes, doesn't it? In the camp now. And you beat them twice in a season. And, and for Frank Rijkaard, every big game this year, except for one, Barca have lost. Every big game this year. Salgado wins that well. Intelligent pass Robinho, from Manistel. Loads of room for Robinho. Higuain, can, Van, can Robinho sail the win? No, he can't, because Duram. <laughs> has had a great second half. Yes, he has. Makes the interception. Puyol. Crushing really well upfield now, though, Madrid. You know, no signs of that tightness that I thought might affect them in the second period. And that's just a nothing ball. Aguero makes the clearance, it's four minutes of injury time. Ronaldinho. <laughs> Salgado. Leo Messi. Into the area, Messi. They're still playing the game. Oh, oh my God, this way, Leo Messi has equalised in the last minute. Absolutely incredible! Just when we thought Barca were dead and buried, Sid, Leo Messi has brought the camp now to life and Madrid. Oh, goodness gracious, they must have thought they had the game in the bag. They fought it, <laughs> they fought it, I fought it. Barcelona, I don't think, believed in it anymore. Leo Messi 
has done nothing in the second half. He was brilliant in the first half, but he's done nothing in the second half until now. And that, Paul, is an absolutely brilliant goal. It's the sort of goal, isn't it, that has all the headline writers going, oh, darn it, I've got to start what, again, and I'm in injury the, time. I'm looking around this press box, right? Everyone's and I'm wiping. Looking at, <laughs> I'm looking at the guys working for the newspapers, writing their match reports, which they have to send the minute the final whistle blows, and they are all frantically tapping at their keyboards, wiping out what they've written before, and the reason is this is a goal and a half. Well, it's not, because they're going to win, it's going to be 3-3, three, three. they're not going to win 3.5-3, three three. but that is a great... Could Cassius you know have done better after I a fantastic would. night? I'm not sure, I thought that at the time, but it's, it's a good oh, finish, isn't what it? what a goal that well, is. Well, we've seen enough drama in this game for two seasons. Is there anything more left in this Classico? We've had penalties, we've had you red cards. You know what, cards. the fans want Barca to go forward, they want another. I'm sure Frank Rijkaard will Frank, settle for that. Frank Rijkaard has got out of jail, Paul. That's never... Oh, I thought for a minute he'd give him full time. That's never full time. Well, Ref, don't blow up, we want more. This is absolutely In amazing. the context of things, I'm going to breathe slowly and calmly. This is a good result for Barca, it leaves them five In points In the context, clear. but hang on. Oof. Oh. It's a bad challenge from Gago. Yellow card, six of the did play a book. All of them, you got to say, good bookings. Cor well, good bookings, you know what I mean? <laughs> Correct decisions. Correct decisions, yes. They are the Leeds really were, Barca five points ahead of Real Madrid. All of a sudden, Madrid were one game off them. And now Barca have to slip up two times. What will this do to Real Madrid? Because they've got to take heart from this performance, from the second half display. Goodness gracious, incredible, and the crowd, At they won a fourth goal, yes, it's something of sing when you're drawing. Yeah. <laughs> Good Jonsson, three Madrid defenders around him, which was Ronaldinho. Trying to get into that penalty area, Ronaldinho! Penalty. The arrow's left him down, the referee's not given it, in fact he's given a free kick for diving. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh, oh. Well, we said there was more drama, there's two balls on the pitch. Well, let's have a look, let's have a look. Skips past Salgado. Diara. Nah, it's not a penalty. It's, it, it's a nudge from Diara. It's a nudge from Diara. I don't think it's enough for a penalty. What? Oh, you look at it from a, from a different angle as we've got on the screens and the ground. I think Diara puts his forearm into Ronaldinho and nudges him. I agree with you entirely that Ronaldinho went down easily. But... Oh, it, uh, uh, you know, put it this way, Paul. I'm glad I'm not the referee because that is a tough call. And he's, I tell you what, he's got guts, eh? Last minute against Barcelona in the Camp Nou. Ooh. Well, has he or hasn't he? Because what would he have done if it had, Whatever you do, you're shot by both sides, yeah. aren't you? If you give it, if you give it, you're crucified. If you don't give it, you're crucified by one or the other. Thoram, once again, exceptional. He, it's a good job he's in the team, because apart from him, Barca have had no defence whatsoever. They've yeah. been dreadful at the back, apart from Thoram, who, as you say, in the second half has been great. What a match. And Indiana Mienko blows the final whistle. The crowd, don't know whether the way the Hank is in fury at him, or to stand up and just cheer out of relief, because Barcelona... They had Madrid on the ropes in the first half, but in the second half, they were groggy, they looked out, and that man on the left, Leo Messi, scored the third goal of a quite outstanding hat-trick, and he doesn't look very happy. <laughs> What's the matter with you? It makes you want to go up to him and tickle him a bit, just to make him laugh. Because... Sid, enough, enough, <laughs> enough, I don't need to know any more about you. An incredible game of football, it has good been to see been. both teams hugging, shaking hands in the penalty circle. Yeah. With the Brazilians there, it really has...